Okay, so let's let's look at this uh, plans for your assignment. Um, we have this uh, middle school, Franklin Junior Middle School. Uh, the double bar graph below represents the student enrollment at Franklin Junior High School. Uh, I've told you before, whenever you're doing these kind of bar graphs, it's very important that you uh, first figure out the totals for each one here. Uh, for example, here, sixth grade, well, it's roughly a little more than 120. See, a little more. This is, a, this is 120 right here. So a little more. This is 140. I'm going to estimate. You don't have to be uh, exactly. I'm going to say más o menos, one-third. Okay. This other one here is between the 100 and 120. That's about 110. Okay. Seventh grade. We have about about 130. Okay. I'm going along these lines. Okay. 130. And this one is exactly on there, 140. This one is also 140. And then we have the next one, which is exactly 120. Okay. And I've told you before, when you're doing these uh, bar graphs, it's always good to find the totals this way, vertically, but also horizontally. Why don't you get the total? Okay. Also, when you're doing these kind of problems, it's, uh, it's usually going to something about part over total. Hence, we can set up a proportion to solve problems or just uh, divide using table. Okay. But it's part over total. So these are all part of the part of the enrollment. Okay, these are part of the enrollment. Oh man, come on! This is part of the enrollment here. So now let's find the total. Okay, so the total would be uh, 130 plus 110 plus 130 plus 140 plus 140 plus 120. Okay. That gives me a total of 770, okay? That's the total, according to my uh, approximations, okay? My maso menos, okay? My maso menos, that's what I got. So all I did was that uh, 130 plus 110 plus 130 plus 140 plus 140 plus 120. Added, added those numbers up, and I got 770, okay? And just double check my work. Yes, yeah, 770, okay? So now I got the totals. I got the totals for each one, each grade level. And I got the total across this with the horizontal total. So then I can go here and answer the question. Well, how many boys did I have? Well, if, did it go to your uh, legend here? Boys are the shaded or the darker shaded. And girls are lightly shaded. Okay, so then sixth grade, it's telling me it's sixth grade. I put 130 there. So sixth grade was 130. So I'm going to put here, okay, 130 boys, and the girls was, uh, my approximation is 110. Seventh grade was 130 and 140. I'm getting these numbers from here, okay, 130, 140. And then eighth grade was uh, 140, 120. So I'm going to put here 140. 120. Okay. And so now all you got to do is find the total number here. Well, this would be what is that? Uh, 4, 7, 10. That's 400. 400 boys. Okay. And approximately uh, there's 370 girls. Well, how many total students? Well, you found that over here. So 770. Okay. And so now you have these answers here. Well, look what number two says. Each student. That means each one, cada uno, paid five dollars for a class fundraiser. So you know they're raising money. What was the total amount of money collected? Each student. That means look at that. Each student. How many students do we have? Seven hundred seventy. So you shouldn't take that long to answer that problem. One student pays five dollars. Well, you have seven hundred seventy of these students. Think about what would you do? Okay. Number two. Number three. I'm sorry. Approximately, what percent of the students that attend junior, uh, Franklin Junior High School are seventh graders? Well, this is the one that you're going to have. What percent? Okay, so you can do this. Uh, uh, you know, part over total. Okay, part over total. So what percent? The question is what percent? You see, 
So you don't know the percent. So you're going to put X over 100 because you don't know the percent. It's, tell, it's asking you what percent of the students. Well, you don't know, but you know you can put an X over 100. Okay, that's an X. Equals, okay, part over total. Part is, well, part is the seventh graders. Total, 100% of the students would be everybody, sixth, seventh, and eighth graders. Well, how many uh, total students do we have? We should have figured this out from here. Look, total students right there, 770. Part of the students was the seventh graders. How many seventh graders did you have? It's right here. Together, because you want boys and girls, so that's what, 270. All you got to do is cross, multiply, and divide, and you'll find the answer. Number four, Franklin Junior High had a daily attendance rate of 98.5%. How many students attend school attended school last Friday? Okay, so had a daily attendance rate of this. Last, so last Friday they had this, in percentage-wise. Well, they want to know how many students, actual students. This is the percent, this is the students. Well, again, set it up your proportion, part over total. Okay, part over total. Uh, you're giving a percent this time. It doesn't say what percent. You're giving a percent. Percents always go over the 100. So then you put 98.5 over 100. Part over total. Okay. How many total students at the school? How much? Well, it's 100 percent of the students. 100 percent was the total students, which is 770. So you put here 770. 98.5 percent was the ones that attended school last Friday. Well, that's what we don't know. So we put X there. And we cross multiply and divide. And we get our answer. Okay, now uh, the back side. Uh, Jeff Mason collected four and two thirds pounds of blueberries. Uh, Monday, five and five eighths pounds of strawberries. And Tuesday, four and one fourth pounds of uh, blackberries. On Wednesday. Uh, how many total, look at the word, how many total? Total pounds. So all you gotta do is total pounds Total pounds, okay? All you gotta do is that. Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. On Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, add them together. You find an LCD or convert to decimals. So, find the least common denominator or convert to decimals. Okay, convert them to decimals or find the LCD. You figure out which one you wanna do. That's all you gotta do is add them together. Uh, Laura kept a look at number two. Laura kept a record of distance and time that she rode her bike. Write an equation that reflects the relationship between the distance in miles and the time in hours. So I know that the distance is always the distance is equal to miles. Uh, how many miles you do in an hour? So okay. So I know miles per hour. So let's look here. In one hour, I can do 2.7 miles. In two miles, in two hours, I can do 5.4 miles. And so, if you think about it, what's the pattern going by? Okay, this is going by once. Well, how much is this one going by? Well, what's 2.7 plus another 2.7? 5.4. I got the second one. Now, if I add another 2.7, I should get 8.1. Okay, and so that gives you 11. That gives you eight, so it does give you, and I should, if the pattern continues, I should get 10.8. Seven plus one is eight, eight plus two is 10, 10.8. So the pattern here is 2.7. Okay, there's many ways to answer this problem, okay? All I did was find a pattern within a table, but that's not the only way you can do it. There's other ways to answer this problem using this table. Uh, it's always y over x when you're talking about rate of change. So we're talking about rate of this word, rate of change. It's change in y over change in x. So the change in the y's was uh, 2.7. Okay, well, the, this would be the x, this would be the y's. The change in the y's would be 2.7, and the change in x would be 1. Rate of change is the same thing as a unit rate. So I know my equation or my answer would be this. Well, y's would equal... 2.7 times 1 or times 2 or times 
x. Okay, so 2.7, 2.7 times x, well let's say x is my hours. So 2.7 times 1 gives me the y, or the d, so the distance. Okay, 2.7 times 2, 2 hours, gives me the 5.4, which is the y. Okay, 2.7 times 3 gives me the 8.1, which is my y. So this will be my equation. I'll give you the whole answer to this one, okay? So that's number two. Uh, number three there. Uh, Mr. Hernandez bought 16 meters of chain link fencing. The section of his yard that needs to be fenced is 50 feet long. So that's what he needs. He needs 50 feet long. He bought this in meters. Uh, did Mr. Hernandez buy enough fencing? Determine the number of feet Mr. Hernandez needs to buy or how many extra feet uh, must he purchase, okay? So let's see here. One meter is that. So I know, okay, meters and feet. One meter is 3.28 feet. Okay. How much did he buy? He bought 16 meters. Okay. Do I know how much feet that is? No, I don't. Okay. I know meters with meters, feet with feet. All I'll do is cross multiply and then I get x equals well 3.28 times 16. Now I'll do it in the calculator here. 3.28 times 16, 52.48. So that's how much I uh, that's how much he bought. He bought 16 meters equivalent to uh, 52.48 feet. The question is, did he buy enough? He did. Well, how much is left over? If he did, how much does he need to buy? How much more does he need to buy? So, what's the final question? Answer. Okay. Number four. When two shapes are similar, they have a common dilation ratio. Uh, that means they have a scale factor. A scale factor. So think of scale factor. Now, similar. I know the word similar. I, I can set up a proportion. Okay, I can set up a proportion. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, are the rectangles similar? Well, let's set up the proportion. This is the width. Width goes with width. So then I'm going to put 12, 36, and then length goes with length. So 15 over 54. Remember, I did it uh, between triangle between rectangles. You can do it within rectangles and still find a proportion, like for example, I can put 12 over 15 and I can put 36 over 54. It should still be the same thing, and it is. So, it, you know, different proportions, same answer. All you gotta do is cross multiply, and if you get the same thing on both sides, then they are similar. And justification, well, I cross multiply and I got the same thing on both sides. But you gotta do the multiplication. Okay, so I left this one pending. This one here, you should know how to multiply fractions. All you gotta do is multiply across. That's it. Not crisscross. No. This is not, you don't do this, look. This is a no no. It's not 9 times 8, 72. 20 times 3 is 60. No. That's not how you do the problem. Don't do it that way. Okay? That's not correct. That's the wrong way to do it. Okay? No. Do it this way. Multiply this way. And multiply this way. And then simplify your answer. Again, multiply this way. Multiply this way. And then simplify. Not simplify. Okay? Simplify. Okay? Your answers. If you can. Alright? And good luck.